Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by your local cable companies, the County of Kern, and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Harvey L. Hall. Good evening and welcome everyone. I appreciate your presence here tonight and I hope it'll be, prove to be a uh, informative one. And uh, please feel free to come back anytime. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor here, Hall. Here. Vice Mayor Hansen. Councilmember Rivera. Here. Councilmember Maxwell. Here. Councilmember Weir. Councilmember Smith. I'm here. Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Parlier. Here. Mayor, a memorandum has been received from staff requesting to pull consent calendar item 8L from the agenda. At this time, I would like us all to stand for the invocation by Dr. Danielle Wright, Freedom Worship Center. And please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by Nevea Herrera, third grade student at Princeton Elementary School in Delano. First Timothy 2, 1 and 4 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is the good and acceptable in the sight of our God, Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of him. Most high God, we acknowledge you on this day, and we just ask that you would take complete control over this city council meeting. We ask, oh God, that you would bless the work that is before the city council today. May every decision that is made, Father, be in your spirit. Turn us again, Father, in our hearts to you. We ask this, that in our city, in our communities, among each other, that there will be unity in the community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we proceed, I request that all cellular telephones and communication devices be silenced. Pursuant to city council policy, council members are prohibited from sending or receiving electronic communications during the meeting, and we request the same from our audience. For safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chambers. Also, please be courteous in the use of any still cameras and video equipment. Audience applause is allowed during the presentation portion of the meeting, but is not permissible at any other time during the meeting. Thank you for the, your cooperation. I'd like to give special recognition this evening to the Cal State uh, Public Administration Political Science class, uh, and also additionally Liberty High School government class. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. Uh, I hope that this will prove to be an interesting one for you and an educational one. Uh, I always uh, offer you the opportunity to come back again at any time to learn about your city government. Madam Clerk, next item please. Item four, presentations. A presentation by Mayor Hall of two AED units to Wastewater Manager Zach Meyer and one AED unit to Water Resources Manager Art Cianello for installation in their respective locations.
This evening uh, marks a very special occasion for me to be able to accommodate the city by presenting and providing to the wastewater treatment facilities and the water resources department two AED units. Several months ago, an employee from the wastewater treatment facility called the mayor's office, spoke to my assistant, and asked if I would consider donating these three AED units that I will be donating this evening. With the use of AED units, we hope that we will not have the need for an AED unit at, at either one of these facilities, but this is the best way to save a life when a person stops breathing, and it's proven to be a, an outstanding tool for saving lives. And, and I think that um, since we have a number of these units already in service in the city, uh, both the water department and the wastewater treatment facilities have received their training prior to this evening in the last two weeks. So we're ready to go with those departments and uh, uh, I'm just uh, very honored to be able to provide these three units. And so representing the Water Resources Department this evening is Art Cianello, and I'd like to call on Art to, to make a couple of comments. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and members of the council. Um, on behalf of the Water Department, we sincerely appreciate uh, receiving uh, this AED device. Um, like Mayor Hall said, Last week, we received training from the manufacturer on how to properly use it. Um, we currently have a cabinet in place in our office in a centrally located place to accept this and, and, uh, and store the unit when it's not being used. And I'm also proud to say that next week, we'll be sending an employee to uh, training uh, to be recertified on use of the AED device. So, um, on behalf of the Water Resources Department, we certainly appreciate this, and we thank you very much. Now I'd like to recognize now Zach Meyer, who is a waste water manager. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, fellow council members. Um, talking with my staff, um, we do get the feeling out of the plants are kind of away from everybody else so knowing that these devices are at our facilities and as the mayor said we hope we never have to use them we do all believe that they could potentially save a, a life one day and again i'm very appreciative to accept this kind donation so thank you listen let's get a photograph here real quick Next presentation is of a proclamation to Adam Kaler, Bike Bakersfield Program Manager, declaring May 2016 Bike Month and May 20, 2016 Bike to Work Day. Well, here we go again. Another one of these positive bike uh, riding recognitions, and this time we're going to have a special event on Bike to Work Day in our city. And I'm here tonight to offer the following proclamation and that recognition. Whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been an important part of the lives of countless people around the world. And whereas the bicycle is a viable, environmentally neutral and green form of transportation, an excellent form of fitness and provides quality family recreation. And whereas millions of Americans engage in bicycling, and bicycle groups throughout our nation and state are promoting greater public awareness of bicycling operations. And whereas the safety education of motorists and cyclists regarding the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and well-being of all users. Whereas Bakersfield residents can engage in a daily healthy and active lifestyle by choosing to ride their bikes rather than driving. 
And whereas Bakersfield residents are encouraged during the month of May by educational programs, along with commuter, computer and recreational events, to experience the joy and freedom of bicycling. And whereas bicycling offers residents a healthier lifestyle along with substantial monetary savings. Now therefore, I, Harvey L. Hall, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim May 2016 as Bike Month on our city and the day of May 20th, 2016 as Bike to Work Day in our city and encourage all citizens to permanently adopt the healthy lifestyle of bicycling. Dated at Bakersfield, California, this fourth day of May 2016, signed Harvey L. Hall, Mayor, City of Bakersfield. And I'd like to introduce you now to Adam Kaler. Thank you, Mayor Hall and the City Council for recognizing Bike Month and supporting a healthy and active community in Bakersfield. This is a great time to get out and ride your bike and enjoy the, the bike paths and the bike lanes and the, uh, and the bike infrastructure that we have here in Bakersfield. We have one of the nicest bike paths that I've ever seen. A um, little bit about Bike Bakersfield is if you, if you don't know, we have uh, a bike kitchen located right here in Chester Avenue between 17th and 18th Street. Um, we do bike service if you need to get your bike tuned up for bike month or for a bike to work week on the 16th to the 20th come on in and we can get your bike tuned up if you need a bike uh, we have a, a lot of bikes to choose from that have been donated by the community and worked on by us uh, so we can get you on a bike for a pretty affordable price um, and if you have a bike that you're not using you will feel free to donate it to us and we'll get it fixed up and under somebody that that needs it and would like to get around uh, a couple of things about events this month. As we said, the 16th through the 20th is Bike to Work Week, so we encourage everybody to ride their bikes to work. We will have commuter stands on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday along the bike path at Cal State and Beach Park from 6 to 9, and on the east side at Baker and Sumner Streets. So if you're on your way to work, you want to stop in and get a drink or fix a flat tire, we'll be there to support. Uh, on the 18th, uh, at 6.30 at the Marketplace is the Ride of Silence, which is to honor those who have been injured and killed by motor vehicles while riding their bikes. It's a really great event if you know somebody or have been involved in an like injured by a motor, uh, motor vehicle. It's a good time to come out and support that. On the 19th, there's Third Thursday at Mill Creek. At 5.30, we'll have uh, stationary bicycle races, a lot of fun, really exciting. Come out and race your friends, see who gets the fastest time. Uh, at 7.30, we'll have the firemen versus the police so come out and see the see the fireworks to see who's stronger cops or the firemen and on friday the 21st is our monthly full moon ride at eight o'clock at beach park really good and fun family event come out ride your bike enjoy the evening uh, good way to follow up bike to work week thank you Item C, Mayor, is a presentation of a plaque to Don Lucas, owner of Don Lucas Jewelry, recognizing the company's beautification efforts. How are you, Don? Hello, good to see you. Hi, how are you? Come over here on this side. Okay. okay. One of the outstanding things that we do as a part of uh, Keep Bakersfield Beautiful is to honor local businesses uh, each quarter that uh, show a outstanding effort of beautification for their business properties. And as I was told this afternoon, this marks the second time that Don Lucas has received a, a, an outstanding award for beautification of his business. The last time was in 1989. So here we are back again on May the 4th, 2016, and Don Lucas is going to be honored uh, for this uh, recognition of his beautiful uh, business. You know, and one thing that uh, caught the uh, uh, committee's eye on this, and my committee members are John Enriquez and Susan Stussy are, are here tonight, was the fact that with our drought requirements that we have, that Don Lucas and his staff came together and, and um, beautified his business by using all uh, drought 
uh, favored plants, and um, it, it just did a real good job for the 1700 block of Oak Street to, to bring some beauty to that area of our city, and so I'd like to present this plaque to Don Lucas in recognition of the Outstanding Business Award for Beautification. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Well, I would like to say a couple of words about this. Uh, Don had nothing to do with this. My wife prodded me to paint the buildings, do everything, and I said, well, the painting's over. Whew. Then all of a sudden, we're going to landscape this. We had a nasty little patch of grass that just we had, had water spilling in the street trying to get it green. And uh, so Kathy uh, hired Bill Smith and uh, DJ Weiner of uh, DW uh, Landscaping. And these guys did the artwork. And when it was done, I said, this is the most fantastic thing that I've seen in this town for a long time. In fact, I actually told Bill Smith, I said, Bill, we're going to get a beautification award. He says, oh, Don, you're full of it. I said, no, I'm not. So when I called him a few weeks ago and told him about it, he thought I was lying to him. I said, no, you got to come to the city council meeting. He says, no, I'm not doing that. You're lying to me. So anyway, I want to give a lot of credit to my wife and Bill and DJ. All I did was write checks. If they, if they weren't there, it'd still look like crud. So anyway, and I also like to thank the city of Bakersfield and the citizens of Bakersfield for all the support I've had over the past 30 years in business. And uh, just thank you very much if anyone's listening. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Next item, please. Public statements. At this time, we will receive public statements. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, provide the copy to the city clerk or provide the necessary copies to the city council. If you are here to speak on hearing item 10A, this is not the time for you to speak. Members of the audience are asked to avoid engaging in any behavior that disrupts the orderly conduct of the meeting. Please do not criticize or impugn the mayor, the city council, or any member of the audience. The city council is very interested and concerned with your issues. Due to the public notice requirements of the Brown Act, the city council cannot take action when an item is not on the agenda. The city council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Madam Clerk, please call the first public speaker. Uh, we have three speakers this evening. The first is G.J. Zala uh, regarding Best Western Hill House vandalism. Good evening. Please identify yourself and proceed. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and uh, City Staff. Uh, my name is G.J. Zala. I'm from the Best Western Hill House on Truxton 700. Recently, we had a lot more vandalism problem at our place, almost like every week. When our guest car got broken, they are very upset, checking out early. They say they will never stay with us again in the future. And living with a very bad image of my business in our downtown Bakersfield. It is very difficult to running a business in downtown due to this kind of situation. So I humbly request to help in this kind of situation, please. Thank you. Council Member Maxwell. Thank you for uh, coming in tonight. I know it's, uh, you and I have had conversations in the, in the past about uh, problems over at the Hill House, and, and it's not just the Hill House. It's, it's pretty much the downtown area. I have people in the Westchester area, both north and south of 24th. I have people in the Orlando area that are all experiencing the same thing, and quite frankly, I personally have 
experienced that. I've had my car broken into twice out in front of my house. And two weeks ago, as I'm leaving at 11.30 from the Mark restaurant, which I'd closed that night, uh, my back window uh, in, in a car was broken in. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing that makes you feel more violated than your personal property um, being opened and, and gone through and some of it stolen. Um, I'm real sensitive to this. Um, I have spoken with uh, the police chief and I've attended some of the uh, uh, community meetings. Uh, we've even conducted a couple to try and uh, have the community help to try and solve this, this problem. Um, uh, I, I would say that you bringing this in front of the, the, the city council is one more example of the city council, since we're talking about budgets tonight, we, we need more police officers. Um, it's, it's really what deters uh, this type of crime more than anything else. I mean, our major crime is down, but very few of us experience murders and rapes and, and those type of bad crimes. What we experience is what I've just described and what you've described. And uh, I think the key element to that is figuring out in this budget how we add 100 more police officers. Uh, so we as a committee, as a city council, I hope we'll be working very diligently to complete that so that you feel safer and your, your business feels safer and you feel better about what the city's doing for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the next public speaker. Savannah Gonzalez and Nicole Bernal regarding backing the blue project. Good evening. Please identify yourself and proceed. My name is Savannah Gonzalez from Liberty High School. And my name is Nicole Bernal from Liberty High School. So the two of us are from Liberty High School and we are currently enrolled in a government class. It's an honors course and we are encouraged to become involved in our community and research problems that we find in our surrounding areas. And recently in Kern County we've been put, or our local law enforcement has been put in bad lights and we don't want that at all. We know that our local law enforcement is here to serve and to honor us and we want to make sure that our community is well aware and they value them just as we do. So when the time came around for us to be, create committees, there are three girls, which doesn't seem very intimidating, but we hope to cause a motion that sweeps over at least our county, our city, and bring this downtown to all our local and our community members, as, like all of you are here, so that you can support us in our movement. So um, currently we have been canvassing downtown. We've been going business to business and um, trying to gain their support. We are actually, we are actually holding an um, event and um, we are inviting the community to also join us in that. Um, we have been um, holding meetings um, just um, like amongst ourselves and with other businesses. We've been trying to um, gain their support and um, Okay, um, we, what we um, seek to do with this is we want to hold an event because um, through the 15th through the 21st of May this month, um, we are holding, it's national, the Memorial Police Week and on the, Um, and what we want to do is hold a window decorating contest with the businesses. Um, we plan to judge these businesses and we also want to offer prizes. We will also be partnering with the um, Bakersfield Police Department in decorating downtown Chester, the trees. We want to light them with blue lights. We also want to um, decorate them in ribbon, blue ribbon to honor those who have fallen and those who are still standing tall and serving us. Um, we also are um, asking the community if they would um, offer, do like we are um, asking for donations. Um, it can be anything from like the materials we use to decorate the trees. So ribbon, we are asking um, local businesses if they would be interested in donating. And we are also asking for um, money donations as um, to pay for putting up the blue lights in Chest the Chester area. And thank you for um, hearing us out, and thank you for um, everyone else hearing us out. Thank you. Excuse me, if someone wants to donate 
a contribution to your effort, how do they go about doing that? So we have a GoFundMe account, and it's at www.gofundme.com slash pro backing the blue. Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. I really have to thank my, uh, my colleague Bob Smith on this one. He, he called me one day and said, hey, I'm going out to Liberty uh, to a government class. You want to tag along and you know, talk to the students out there? went out there and I met these girls. Uh, it's a fantastic class ran by uh, Miss Howlett. Um, the students there were all great. Uh, Savannah and Nicole uh, and uh, Emily too, can't forget her, uh, approached us and talked about this great idea. Uh, in fact, last council meeting, to show you how dynamic this class is, we had other students in here talking about recycling and everything with the and Park Department. So their idea for um, backing the blues is fantastic. We've had several meetings with uh, city staff regarding this. Um, Councilmember Sullivan has been just a great partner in this too. Uh, so we're going to start uh, with a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this coming Monday, uh, the girls, I, I think Com Councilmember Smith too, are going to be on first look with Scott Cox. We're going to be talking about this uh, this thing, uh, backing the blue. Uh, we should be lighting. Uh, Chester Avenue, every other tree, uh, other lighting uh, in front of the Robobank, uh, blue ribbons on some trees to signifying Law Enforcement Memorial Week, which is going to be starting uh, May 15th. And uh, we're just going to coincide the Backing the Blue event with uh, the Memorial Week, too. And uh, thank you so much, girls. It just shows, you know, how uh, active you are in the community and just how great, you know, our young people are. And thank you so much. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mary. Yes, I just wanted to say the same thing. Thank you, Savannah and Nicole, for coming. And, and Bakersfield, as a community, always supports our police department. And I think this is a great idea to, to show that support and reinforce it community wide. So thank you very much. Were you intending to mention the, the blue lighting? Go, go ahead. Madam Clerk, please call the next uh, public speaker. Mayor, I'm sorry. I have a light, my light on. Oh, you did? I do now, yes. <laughs> Council Member Sullivan. Ah, thank you, thank you. Yes, girls, thank you for wanting to be involved. And uh, certainly we're all eager to uh, recognize our police officers. We are planning a, uh, a, a light turning on time um, in front of Robo Bank Monday evening, Monday afternoon at five o'clock. We'll have all of the lights in place. The 16th, yes, okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, yes, so you girls certainly are, are in want, we want you to be there. Hopefully, um, we're going to be planning it to be very special. Hopefully, the mayor will be there to read a proclamation. But it's all about just bringing attention to our police officers, respect, honor, appreciation. It will be for the full week uh, through that next weekend. So thank you, girls, for getting us started on this. It's going to be uh, intending for it to be an annual event well-deserved, so we're excited about it and, and looking forward to just putting the message out that nobody better mess with our police officers unless it's in a positive way, and um, we're, we're excited about it. So thank you, girls, for getting this started. Madam Clerk, please call the next public speaker. The last speaker is Marvin Dean regarding high-speed rail. Good evening. Please identify yourself and proceed. Okay, before I get started, I, I would be remiss to not say this, Mr. Mayor, since you now you're retiring from our city. I'm sad and I'm pleased. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you for your many years of service. And if I had a chance, I'd come up. I don't want to take my minutes. I'd come up and shake your hand. But I want to say you have been a mayor for this whole entire city for everybody. Man, you've been a truly a blessing for our city. I, I for one, I love you, man, and I appreciate what you've done. And I know you need time with your family. And just to fill your shoes, look how many people are trying to fill your shoes, <laughs> 25 people to replace you. Uh, so you've been a blessing for this city. Uh, I, I'm here, I gave you, a, I gave you guys uh, 
I'm not going to read from this strip, but I gave you a, a strip. It says, my name is Marvin Dean. I'm here speaking on behalf of the current minority contractor of the High Speed Rail Association, which we formed as an advocacy group. And I'm here tonight to make an announcement and also to make a request of this city. The San Joaquin Valley High Speed Rail, uh, we, the San Joaquin Valley High Speed Rail Association and the current minority contract is holding its ninth annual uh, public contracting conference. Uh, it's going to be a four-day event, May 10th and May, through May 13th. And let me tell you why and what's going on. Some of you know that the city of Bakersfield is going to host a High Speed Rail Governing Board meeting here on May 10th. And that's the second time only ever that the High Speed Rail Governing Board has met in Bakersfield. One was at the Board of Supervisors. The, on the 10th, it's going to be here. And as you know, the staff has worked out a, an agreement with the High Speed Rail, Res, uh, uh, High Speed Rail uh, Association to settle the lawsuit to look at some downtown stationing location. And I believe they're going to announce that they're going to choose the, the site that the city has come up with. So it shows that the High Speed Rail is trying to work with this community. The, the announcement I want to make is the High Speed Rail Governing Board uh, Chairman, Dan Richards, after the board meeting here, he has agreed to meet with the community, and we're going to be hosting him to do a reception uh, with the community uh, at the downtown Marriott uh, from 5.30 to 8.30, and not only to hear from him, for him to hear from us so that he can hear the concerns that we have uh, so that we make sure that some of the other outstanding issues that we have in this community uh, will be addressed. So I'm asking the city to participate. So in the letter, it states on the 10th, uh, uh, and I've given you two items here, Bear with me, I may be a few minutes over, but not long. On the 10th, we're going to have the, ch uh, the chairman of the high school uh, reception from 5.30 to 8.30 at the uh, Marriott Hotel. I'm asking Vice Mayor uh, Harold Hansen to, to attend on behalf of the city, and I'm asking Doug uh, uh, Geisick to be on the 10th. On the 11th, uh, we're going to have a tour. We're opening up a tour, uh, a, a resource center at 1330 Instruction, and that is going to make sure that people in this community is ready for the jobs and the contracts. They have a 30% contract, a goal for a small business, and they have a 30% for disadvantaged worker. We're going to make sure our people are ready. We're going to, so we're opening up a resource center, and people can come in and kick the tires and see what our facility looks like. That's going to be from 8:30, uh, 930 to 12. 30 on the training center at uh, on the 11th. Then we're going to have a reception uh, mixer, we call it a mixer, on the 12th uh, from 5.30 to 8.30 at the Marriott, getting ready for our main conference we're going to have on the 13th. And on the 13th, uh, we're going to have an all-day conference. We're going to have breakout sessions, workshops. Uh, we're going to have speakers, a luncheon, vendor booth, and all that. And we're asking the city to participate in that in several ways. And I'll wrap it up on this real quick. I talked to my councilman, Willie has indicated he's going to be in Washington that day, uh, and there's two flyers you have. One is on the conference itself. It says the ninth annual conference, and as a part of the conference, it says community invited to a high speed rail job, uh, uh, job uh, uh, information about getting jobs, because 30 percent, I'll be real quick, Mr. Mayor. So we're, uh, since my councilman can't come to speak, I'm asking my colleague on the air board, Bob Smith, which he and I serve on the air board together, I'm asking him to fill in for Willie, uh, uh, the time slot we have for Willie uh, to come in and just make some remarks to those people who are looking for jobs. And then the, the last thing on the 13th, we're asking uh, the mayor has already, we talked to mayor to come and bring in a welcome for the general session. Uh, we're asking the trip people to be there on panel, uh, uh, panel one. We're asking uh, the purchasing people to be on panel two. And we're asking the public director, uh, the public works director to be one of our luncheon speakers to talk about the cent uh, Centennial Quarter project and what opportunities would be for DBAs. And I'll leave it at that and I'll follow up with each of you later. And thank you for uh, giving me a couple extra minutes. But this is very important. You got a couple uh, of extra minutes because you said good things about well, the mayor. But, 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 I meant, but, I, but I meant that, and you know I meant that. <laughs> but, but the bottom line, this is very important. The high speed rail chair is going to be here, and I just say we all, this is for all of us, and, and I'll, I'll close on this. Six billion dollars is going to be spent in this valley. It's who's going to get the jobs and the contracts and the money. If the money stays in this valley, it's going to benefit all of us, including public agency. So help us help each other so that this community will benefit from this project if it's going to come, whether we oppose it or not. Let's get the best project we can and make sure that we get the maximum benefit from it if it happens in our neighborhood. That's all I'm asking. So please help me help us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council members. Council Member Rivera, did you have comment on this? Madam Clerk, please call the next item. 
Mayor, the next item is workshops. Item A, uh, fiscal year 2016-17 proposed budget overview. Mr. Tandy, please. Honorable Mayor and members of City Council, uh, we're here tonight to present the City Manager's proposed budget for fiscal year 16-17. Uh, as an introduction uh, of that document to the City Council. Uh, this past year when the Council uh, made its annual calendar, it voted to have the departmental presentations take place on two Mondays uh, instead of uh, being parts of regular Council meetings. And those dates uh, are May 9th and June 6th, both starting uh, currently uh, scheduled at noon. Um, procedural aspects of the budget will occur at regular council meetings on May 18th, June 8th, and with adoption scheduled on June 29th. Uh, the uh, procedural things are primarily statutory requirements for hearings, uh, postings, um, and uh, similar issues. Um, it is more difficult to prepare a budget in hard times than it is in good times. And I want to express a deep appreciation to the staff, uh, all department heads, all the departmental budget teams, the department uh, budget managers, uh, and all of those who worked on the budget. It's a challenging year and a difficult year, and uh, the city staff rose to the occasion, thought creatively and out of the box, and came up with a budget which contains minimal damage given our revenue declines. Uh, and for that, um, I wish to express uh, the appreciation of my office. Uh, tonight, the uh, actual uh, document presentation will be by Chris Hewatt uh, and Nelson Smith, uh, who are key members of the budget team that worked on this document. So Chris will be next. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> uh, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, uh, Chris Hewitt, City Manager's Office. As Mr. Tandy mentioned, I will uh, move through the, the first part of the presentation followed by Mr. Smith, uh, and then we'll be available for questions at the end. Uh, a little bit of an overview. Uh, as you are all aware, we have seen uh, declining sales tax revenues, uh, mostly attributable to the local oil economy and the trickle-down and ripple effects associated with that, with, uh, which I'll go into uh, some detail here in a moment. Uh, we continue to see increases both in PERS and healthcare cost. Again, uh, this is something that we have discussed over the last few years. Uh, that Those costs are built into the, the budget that is before you this evening. Uh, really what it means is that we must look at our spending plan and begin to uh, fit it with, within our available resources. Uh, what you're going to see tonight is a general fund budget uh, that shows reductions in full-time vacant positions. Uh, that means that there will be less resources for certain special projects. You may notice uh, through the budget intervals uh, for maintenance of certain items, streetscapes, parks, that, that nature of, of activity. Uh, I wanted to mention, though, that staff, we continue to focus on providing the best possible services to both the residents of the city and to the visitors uh, that come through the town despite our difficult circumstances. Some updates on oil numbers that we follow on a regular basis. Since last March, we've seen a 21% uh, decrease in oil-related uh, employment. We've seen the most recent city unemployment rate jump to about 10.4 percent. The countywide number is about 11.4 percent. To give us some perspective, the state level uh, as of the latest numbers is sitting at about 5.6 percent. We talk about drilling activity out in the, the county areas that, uh, that tends to uh, be a good barometer of, of the industry. That's down 85% since the fall of 2014. Uh, and most of what we see in the news and in the media is the price per barrel of oil. That's down about 65% here locally since the summer of 2014. I did put in there, though, that I would like to, to let you know that since we were in front of you in January, although not a significant uh, increase, uh, oil has somewhat stabilized, I would call it, at around $40 a barrel locally. 
Again, what that means, uh, less trickle down at, in, into sales tax as of the last sales tax report. These are some numbers that I wanted to highlight that, that have been provided to you previously. The oil and gas service component of sales tax activity uh, is down 42% compared to the same quarter in 2014. Uh, service station sales tax revenues off or down by about 17.5% when looking at that same time period. We get into the indirect or the disposable income type purchases that are made uh, when there are layoffs, when there are impending layoffs. Uh, we see declines in stuff like new car sales, which is down, as well as retail type uh, activity. I did want to mention some positive news. We've actually seen development activity remain relatively steady. Uh, we actually got some new numbers yesterday for April of 2016. Single family home permits through April 2016 are at 430. We look at the same period in 2015, we show 520. Uh, there's a caveat in there uh, that our building staff uh, has made us aware of is that some changes in building code around January they think impacted one month of numbers, um, but they at least at this point in time, are, are showing steady uh, numbers month to month after that. Solar permitting remains uh, very, very steady. You can see we had 1,695 permits year to date uh, through April compared to uh, just over 1,700 in 2015. Another focus of staff, uh, and this has always been a focus, but uh, is more so now than ever, is, is a focus on applying for grants that leverage and maximize local dollars. We've been very successful in the past. Uh, with receiving grants for various uh, programs and activities and projects, and we continue to make that a focus of, of our office and of the departments. Uh, we are in the process right now of applying for six or seven more uh, grants that deal with local road or infrastructure projects, bike and pedestrian improvements, hazard mitigation projects, and employee uh, wellness programs. We'll get into more of the detail of these categories here in just a little bit, but uh, as a summary, uh, secured property tax for next fiscal year uh, is actually going to show a, a, we're projecting a modest increase of 3%. That's based on our discussion with the county uh, and properties that are within the city of Bakersfield. It's a little bit different, of course, when we're talking about countywide numbers. If you see in the, in the media and from reports, they deal with directly with the mineral values and oil prices. Uh, but uh, within the city, we're, we're projecting a, a positive 3%. Sales tax revenue is, is what we're mainly focused on and have been focused on. We're showing about a four-month four quarter uh, combined negative 5% trending for the current year. That has resulted in reductions of approximately $3.5 million to the general fund. We're not anticipating any growth for next year, but what that does do is compounds things, and as we'll show you later in, in this presentation, uh, we, we had to reduce spending in the current year, and we're continuing to reduce spending in the current year. That makes next year's budget uh, significantly lower when you compare what we adopted around the same time last year. Development revenues, uh, we, we did project a slight decrease. Transient occupancy tax or hotel tax, again, we have oil-related travel to the region that has subsided or decreased. Uh, over the last 18 months or so, so we do anticipate a 5% reduction uh, in transient occupancy tax revenues. I'd like to make a note here, police asset forfeiture, we've talked about this a, a few different times, but we have budgeted uh, in the amount of $1.5 million in the police department budget for callback or overtime, uh, and to a certain extent that alleviated uh, a further need to reduce general fund appropriations at this time. A quick labor status, again, uh, no major changes coming into the new fiscal year. Uh, as you're aware, in the current year, we have their catch-up provisions in certain public safety contracts. That, that is completed. Uh, there are no cost of living adjustments factored into the document that is before you. Uh, we do continue, though, our discussions with labor groups on new agreements. Staffing changes, uh, we are proposing, staff is proposing uh, a 13, a reduction of 13 full-time vacant positions that are within the general fund. There's one additional reduction due to a vacancy at the arena that's in the transient occupancy tax fund. Uh, we do also have built in two civilian positions within police that are anticipated to become vacant mid-year. We propose to freeze those at that, that time. I'd like to highlight, though, that, that what is before you, there is no change in the public safety sworn compliments at this time, whether that be police or fire. 
The net result uh, is a savings to the general fund, or the result is a savings to the general fund of approximately a million dollars uh, for the 12 months in next fiscal year. Those savings are reflected in the, the respective departments uh, that uh, you'll hear more from over the coming uh, weeks. When you look at our complement to the authorized complement as proposed for next year, it remains about 93 positions lower than where we were uh, really prior to the recession in the 08-09 year. Getting into a little more detail on the actual vacant full-time positions, this is the, the proposed list before you. Uh, five positions in public works, various divisions uh, within the general fund, two positions within the community development department, two positions within the executive department, and four positions within the recreation and parks department. Again, looking at uh, the bigger picture, uh, the proposed complement uh, tonight is 15-24 next fiscal year with a comparison to 15-34 uh, that was authorized in the current year and actually the last two years we've been at that number and you can see we were, we were slowly climbing uh, back towards pre-recession levels prior to the latest downturn in oil prices. Summaries of proposed changes to utility rates, uh, refuse proposed a 3% increase. Uh, this would be the second rate increase in the, only uh, the second increase, excuse me, in the last five years. Sewer, 2.4%. Uh, you can see the, uh, what the single family user rate would be uh, if, if approved. Again, the second rate increase proposed only in the last five years. And domestic water, staff is proposing about a 3.5% increase there. Uh, that's variable, of course, depending on, on usage. And that would be the first proposed rate increase since uh, 2010. Uh, the various departments, the individual departments, will be providing you with some more information on these uh, as we move forward. And we do have a public hearing, uh, I believe, for these set for June 8th. Additional items to note that I wanted to, to make you aware of, fleet services uh, continues to replace uh, pieces of equipment that have met their, their end of life. Uh, this, was, this number of $6.3 million was built into the budget after uh, multiple reviews of the equipment list and it was actually reduced uh, significantly from what was originally proposed based upon uh, economic circumstances and our information technology division. Uh, it also replaces equipment throughout the city. Uh, and again, it's about a million dollars, but uh, reduced from originally uh, proposed, uh, what they originally proposed. A little bit about uh, the non-departmental in this case, the retiree health care annual required contribution related to our other post-employment benefits uh, for retiree health care. Uh, the general fund arc for the for next year is 5.2 million, or is, is identified as 5.2 million. We've had some overfunding in the previous years, so we're able to reduce the contribution next year to about 3.5 million. That doesn't really change the funding status. It actually allows us to remain fully funded. Uh, and I believe Mr. Smith, uh, when I, and next week when he has his uh, finance presentation, will have some additional information there about about the uh, the arc. We do have a contribution built into the budget. Uh, over the past few years, uh, the Symphony and the Beale Park Band uh, have been uh, funded at a slightly higher level. We're proposing a 10% reduction there and a step down in the council contingency over historical amounts to $25,000. A highlight, uh, we are proposing to continue the spay and neuter program. If you recall, we, uh, the council actually uh, increased the the amount for that program to provide low cost pay and neuter vouchers that's built into the budget for next year at that higher amount of $40,000. Turning to the capital improvement program, our total proposed capital improvement program for next year totals about $54 million and I will go through some of the highlights. Nick Fiddler uh, will be presenting you with a more uh, detailed uh, review of the capital improvement budget during the public works presentation. Uh, next year for the Thomas Roads Improvement Program, uh, we are proposing to allocate $28.4 million in local funds. There's no federal earmarks uh, or federal dollars being uh, proposed to be allocated next year. Uh, this is uh, a little bit different than in years past. It's more of a timing, um, a timing thing than anything else. 
There are two uh, projects that are being proposed for the, the corridor. One is $7.2 million for the last phase of the right-of-way fund acquisition, uh, right-of-way acquisition funds that are needed, and then $19.1 million for debt service and for, for future construction costs of the corridor. Moving into capital, or moving into the community development block grant, and this item also appears uh, in more of a formal hearing process later on your agenda, but as constituted, proposing uh, $1.76 million for various curb gutter and sidewalk improvements throughout uh, wards one, two, and seven, and there are three shade structure projects that are also proposed and a lighting improvement uh, project that's being proposed in, in ward one there at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Park Improvement Fund, uh, these funds are used uh, entirely and solely for the purposes of, of what they describe, park improvements, proposing uh, $1.2 million in additional funding for the continuation of the development of phase three of the Sports Village, $275,000, excuse me, in additional funding for the phase two of the Mesa Marin Sports Complex in Northeast Bakersfield, and then two playground rehabilitations uh, in the next uh, year. Local street projects, non-trip related local street maintenance and improvement projects. This is a breakdown of the funding that we are proposing for next year. That is uh, local funding. Uh, totals about $23 million. You can see the various sources there. Uh, Six million from the capital outlay fund, which is transient occupancy tax. $14.3 million out of the general fund and $2.6 million in the transportation development fund. A couple of the projects that I'd like to highlight uh, quickly are two pavement rehabilitation projects. I believe the first one is in Ward 2, California from Oak Street to H Street, a pavement rehabilitation project on P Street from Brundage Lane to California Avenue, and two street improvement projects uh, to widen areas of the road where they're not widened. Uh, one is the west side of Weibel Road. This is in between Hosking and Berkshire. There are two small areas that uh, are not widened and the rest is. And then you may be more familiar with Ming Avenue at Baldwin Road. We're working on a, in a collaboration with the county on this project. I believe the annexation, uh, the resolution to begin the annexation for this project was uh, approved at your last meeting. This will improve a stretch of road right near Valley Plaza Mall on the uh, north side of Ming Avenue. Bikeway and pedestrian improvements, we have uh, two federally funded, 100% federally funded projects. One is uh, improvements on Brundage Lane and A Streets. These are both class two and three bike, and bike lane improvements. And then rehabilitation along the Kern River bike path, a stretch that runs from Buena Vista Road to Coffee Road. Two other items that I wanted to make note of. One is pedestrian countdown timers. Uh, these will be installed. You see the, the countdown uh, at some of the intersections around downtown and other areas of the city right now. These propose to be installed in northeast and southeast Bakersfield. Again, 89% federally funded. And then we were successful in getting uh, grant funding for A Street area sidewalks. Uh, and this will improve uh, pedestrian access on A Street between Brundage Lane and San Emilio Street. Excuse me. Some additional miscellaneous projects that you'll find in the capital improvement uh, program for next year as proposed. The Animal Care Center, we are proposing to continue allocating $30,000 for miscellaneous improvements and repairs that arise over the, the fiscal year. Uh, a couple years ago, we updated the city's uh, American with Disabilities Act transition plan. Part of that included projects and improvements that were identified uh, and we have allocated funding over the last few years for those purposes, so we continue that next year uh, as those projects arise. And then a, a multi-year project, uh, which we probably, most of us see, but uh, may not realize, is you have the traffic vehicle de detection cameras throughout the city that regulate traffic and the flow. This is year two of four to replace uh, many of obsolete traffic cameras that we have throughout the city. Uh, I will... Get into the numbers detail in here in just a moment, and then I'll follow up with uh, Mr. Smith talking about the general fund. Uh, bigger picture, when we're looking at all funds, both the capital improvement pro program and the operating side of the budget, 
uh, we, we show a, about a 2019.17% decrease. Really the operating side uh, of the budget, is, it shows only a slight decrease of 2.5% or so, or about $10 million. Uh, the larger decrease on the capital improvement side really uh, is reflective, again, is what I mentioned earlier about timing and about uh, the, the, um, the timing of, of budgeting for certain federal earmarks and for certain TRIP programs, to, uh, projects, depending on which phase they are in and what year we're in. So that really is the, the largest uh, notable difference between those two um, capital budgets. Uh, and of course, there is a slight decrease in, in some discretionary capital uh, projects uh, as we've seen transient occupancy tax, excuse me, uh, decrease uh, over the last year. From a numbers perspective, looking at, at basically the, the same numbers in a little more detail, this is the revenues and resources by type and what staff is projecting and proposing for next fiscal year, starting off with taxes and assessments. Uh, next from a dollar standpoint is our charges for service category, uh, but total revenues uh, for the city uh, are projected at 396 million. There's fund balance and transfers in from, from other funds that uh, also uh, go into budgeting the total resources, which we are projecting at $461 million. On the other side of the coin, there's the appropriations. Uh, and again, um, based upon the resources that we are projecting, uh, this is the staff's proposed uh, allocations or appropriations for next fiscal year. Uh, again, you can see that uh, public safety uh, is right around the same level it was last year. Again. This public works number uh, that includes both years, the capital improvement number, so that's why you show just a slight or a notable decrease there, excuse me. Um, but again, uh, we're totally appropriations of a little over $461 million. From a percentage standpoint, a visual standpoint, as far as breakdown, going back to that first slide I showed you about where the, the revenues and the resources come from and the sources, this could give you a, a visual depiction of, of that, uh, taxes and assessments and charges for service, uh, nearly equal with the remaining uh, items you can see. Again, on the other side of the coin, looking at uh, all funds operating in capital and where the, the monies are proposed to be appropriated, you see public works at close to 35%, police and fire, uh, over here totaling a little under 30 percent. And with that, I want to turn it over to Nelson Smith, who is going to provide you with additional information on the general fund. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members. My name is Nelson Smith, Finance Director, and it's my pleasure to walk you through the general fund revenues for next fiscal year. This is an overview of general fund revenues totaling $195,975,000. As you can see, the two largest components of general fund revenues are property tax and sales tax, making up a little over 71% of total revenues. A little more detail on property taxes. Uh, we're proposing a budget of $73,826,000 for next year. Uh, the two largest components of that are uh, current year secured property taxes and the property tax in lieu of VLF. This is a graph showing those figures for the current secured property taxes. Uh, these numbers do include unitary tax as well. Uh, where the blue line is the current year uh, revised estimate showing a 4% increase from 37 million to 38.4, and then next year's estimate is 39.6, which is a 3% increase. Sales taxes are the second largest uh, general fund revenue source, about 34% of total general fund revenues. We're proposing a 5% decrease in the current year from 70 million down to 66.8 million, and our estimate for next year is a zero growth. This is a uh, chart of the uh, sales tax history. You can see the decline over the past couple of years uh, with the $66 million estimate for next year. 
Other taxes make up about 5% of general fund revenues, including the utility franchise tax, business license tax, and real property transfer taxes. License and permit revenues, a little over 1% of total general fund. Uh, the largest component of this are, are development permits, uh, uh, building permits for, for the most sake. Intergovernmental revenues, which are basically federal and state grant revenues, uh, approximately 1% of total general fund revenues. Charges for service make up a little over 10% of general fund revenues. Uh, maintenance district services are the assessments to the uh, citywide uh, park and median maintenance district that, w that is collected on the tax roll. Uh, we have interdepartmental charges that go into this account. Uh, development fees, these would be uh, inspection fees from the uh, building department and public works. And then the fire charges, that is the fire fund revenue that comes from the County of Kern with the uh, joint powers uh, agreement between the city and county fire departments. Fines, forfeits, and assessments make up about 1% of general fund revenues. Uh, you can see the million five eighty six there of seized asset monies. This is proposed uh, to be transferred um, to cover overtime and callback pay for the police department next year. And miscellaneous revenues again, a little less than one percent of total revenues. Um, and that concludes my portion. I'm going to turn it back over to Chris for the remainder of the uh, presentation. So we've covered the, the revenue side. Uh, you're now looking at a slide that shows the proposed general fund budget for next year by department, the appropriation side, showing a little over a 2% decrease as compared to the current year adopted budget. That's roughly $4.1 million, uh, smaller uh, in size. Um, public, or public safety, excuse me, uh, remains around $123 million. I believe that's a little over 60% of the total uh, proposed general fund budget for, for next year. Again, an item of note there at the bottom. Uh, the council contingency is proposed to be reduced uh, once again from 50 to, to 25,000. Again, uh, just visually looking at where the dollars, uh, the resources that are available that are projected next year in the general fund are allocated to uh, both police and, and fire uh, show again over a little over 60% uh, or so, uh, and then followed by public works, recreation and parks, and uh, so on. I'd like to also break the general fund down in just another way. Another way to look at it is by category, um, personnel, salary, and benefits make up about 80% of the general fund operating close to 20 Well, the capital, which is the uh, operating capital side of things is less than a uh, of course, a percent there in, in fiscal transfers is very small as well. Moving forward, uh, our quarter one 2016 sales tax figures, those will be released in mid-June uh, between now and then. And, and as we do pretty much every day, uh, we are monitoring all revenue sources and we monitor all other indicators that we do have it at our disposal. Uh, and, and we'll be making recommended adjustments as needed as we move forward. Uh, I wanted to, to end at least the, the budget portion of the presentation with the fact that we continue to focus on council goals and priorities um, uh, with uh, our available resources that we do have. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, as Mr. Tandy mentioned, we have some upcoming dates that we wanted to remind you and the public of and, and make you aware of. Uh, May 9th, uh, next week, we'll have department presentations from the departments that you see on the screen. Um, including the police and, and the fire departments. We are tentatively looking at scheduling a session on June 6th as requested uh, to what I'm calling Budget 101, but to discuss some more of the basics of the budget, how it's comprised, the, the different revenue sources that, that uh, make up the budget. Uh, June 6th, we'll be back in the council chambers to review the budgets for the four departments listed, including public works, Again, which will have a more detailed review of the CIP uh, document and projects. We do have a public hearing scheduled for June 8th, and we do anticipate the budget to be adopted uh, on the 29th. 
I'd like, again, with our, our new website that was just launched, um, we hopefully we've made it easier for people to locate the uh, budget information. It's under how do I, right off the homepage, you how do I, and you learn about the city budget. That has not only all the presentations that will be made this year will be posted the morning after the meetings, uh, but does have archived information there as well. And I put this coming soon here because uh, over the, the course of the last couple of years, there's been interest in implementing an open budget platform. I am happy to let you know that staff is currently working with a vendor to implement that. Uh, this is an example screenshot of a dashboard. Um, not, not from any of our data, but just an example. Uh, under this uh, platform, you'll be able to drill down into certain revenues and expenditures and operational budgets and capital budgets to get more information um, on, on various operations. We do look uh, to have that uh, being rolled out to coincide with the new fiscal year. Uh, so again, that, that is in the works and, and on track, and, and we're happy to be able to report that back to you, that that, that uh, should be coming out soon. Uh, I'd like to end my presentation, again, with recognition of the budget team. You see all the various names here throughout, and, and the various departments. They help us each and every year uh, work on ideas, concepts, and, and ways to, to maximize the resources that we do have available. Uh, department heads and budget managers, we would not uh, be able to put the budget together without them. And of course, city staff, uh, many of them are um, behind the scenes, so to speak, working on the budget, uh, both during the budget process and year round. And again, uh, without them, uh, this would not be possible. So with that, um, myself and others are available for, for questions. Thank you. Council Member Maxwell. Thank you, Mayor Hall. Um, Chris, I, you know, I've, I've got a lot of questions. Um, but since we've got two of our council members missing tonight, uh, what I'd like to do is submit them in writing so that I can get them back, give you some time to really think about the answers to them, because I think it's going to take a little bit more. And I don't want to do it tonight. I think that would just draw out um, uh, too long. Uh, and this is something that I think that we can, we can do that communication back and forth. There, there's actually just one thing that I think I'd like to answer tonight. The police asset forfeiture, um, you're saying that that's budgeted in an amount of 1.5 million or call back over time. What have we been budgeting that for in the past? Uh, Honorable Mayor, Councilmember Maxwell, uh, in the past, uh, I, I, recently we have budgeted that for things like capital projects, uh, the shooting range came to mind. As, as related to police activities? As related, yes. There are, very, there are certain um, activities, programs, and projects that that money can be used for. Uh, but in the past, normally it would be capital type of, of projects or special so enforcement So the police department's not going to have those available, those funds available now? Uh, at, th there, at this point, the asset forfeiture that is available would be proposed to be going to the overtime and callback. Okay, and, and was that police asset forfeiture always supposed to go into general funds, or was it, I mean, is that something that we've always done and then just refer, I, reverse I think it, it I think it, uh, it would depend on the fiscal year. Uh, does it automatically go into the general fund? No. Okay. Uh, in certain years, again, it would go into the, the capital outlay fund, again, for like a capital project. But we have the right to put it into general funds. I believe uh, we do. Um, I, would, I would also say that it's, uh, in this case, it's probably more one time in nature than not because we have been made aware and I think for a period of time, if, if I recall correctly, um, there has been sort of a, a stoppage in asset forfeiture that is coming to the city. I believe that's a federal uh, issue. So this is a proposed one time type action. Okay, well, I'd say when you answer some of my other questions, you, you might talk about that federal sure. forfeiture and, and how that has affected the money that we're, we're currently getting and, and why this is going into uh, the, the general fund as opposed to uh, leaving it with the police department for some of the asset uh, essential things that they need to do. But uh, with that, I really don't have any other questions. I say I'm going to submit them in, in writing and uh, look forward to your answers. Thank you. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Um, quick question. I, I, I may have missed it, but what's the reason for, um, and I, I think I know what it is, but what's, what is the reason for the rather large difference between Public Works' 15-16 uh, adopted budget and the 16-17 proposed budget? Is it related to TRIP? 
Uh, Honorable Mayor, Council Member Avery, that's correct. Yeah, that okay. number that you're looking at uh, combines both their operating and their capital budget. So last year there were certain projects within the TRIP program that were funded. It's a timing thing. So yes, you're correct. That, that was, Those were monies that were allocated last year that from a timing perspective we don't need to allocate this year. Okay. So, so the that difference, which is 40, about $90 million is all from TRIP, or, or are we seeing a reduction? It, it's probably in, not all from any TRIP. Other there, 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 there may be capital projects in some of the enterprise. Well, first and foremost, too, as, as I talked about, uh, the discretionary component of the, the capital program mainly comes from transient occupancy tax revenues, and so we've seen a decrease in transient occupancy tax revenues, so there will be less discretionary type of capital projects that may be budgeted within the public work, under the public works umbrella. Uh, secondarily, the, the enterprise funds, um, depending on the year, will budget for certain types of capital projects, and so there may be some, some differences there. But I would say a good portion of it is related to the, the TRIP program. Okay. How, 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 much of, how much of that is, is money we set aside in 15-16 that we're technically carrying over into 16-17? The um, two things that come to mind that were budgeted this fiscal year, uh, I believe, unless I, one of them went back to previous fiscal year, um, were the 24th Street project and the Kern River Bridges project. Uh, the federal shares for those, uh, those uh, will be carried forward uh, until construction occurs, uh, but don't need to be reappropriated in this year's budget. But the, so the so you're talking about the fed you're talking about federal dollars. It's both, but uh, okay. It's typically each project <coughs> has a different total composition. The Kern River Bridges project is 89% federal dollars. Okay, so so there is there is some amount of money being carried over that is dedicate or city funds set aside. The matching portion for those federal funds, yes. Okay, um, I don't expect you to know it now, but I'd be curious to get that number um, maybe when Mr. Fiddler makes his presentation. Um, does, so would, would that change also reflect us ex to, to, your, to the comment you just made, Mr. Tandy, does, does that mean then we are also carrying over federal dollars or have we? Yes. We are. Yes. Could, so could I, get, could I get that number as well? Sure. When the time comes? Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, one other uh, quick question. Who's, um, who's the vendor we're using for this open budget platform? Honorable Mayor, Council Member Rivera, oh, we're working with a group called Socrata. Uh, they actually partner with our accounting system, Sun, uh, vendor SunGuard. Uh, so it reduces some of the, it, it partners the two programs to where there's not this manual kind of data dump periodically. It actually, uh, they're, they're coordinated and they, they're partnered. Um, so, Socrata, they're trying to think of some of the other cities, the uh, city of Boston, I believe, Savannah, they're, they're okay. large cities that are, are using that I'm, platform. I'm assuming there's a cost associated with that? Uh, there is. I, I don't have that number. I can get that number for you. Is that something that will be brought to either Budget and Finance or the Council before we... I believe that that was um, a department level agreement that we, we moved forward with, so I, I believe that's already in motion. <coughs> Can I get details on, on, on what that was? Sure, yes. Cost and what they submitted, et sure. cetera. Um, the only reason I bring that up is if you recall, uh, gosh, this would have been maybe a year and a half, two years ago, a group did, I don't remember their name sure. right now, did come and present to Budget and Finance on a very similar proposal we did not, uh, we did not adopt that, and so, you know, while I'm, I'm sure whatever they come up with will be great, um, I sure would like to be more involved in that, given we did have that conversation. Um, so if I could get that information, that'd be great. Thank you. Council Member Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Chris, that was a good report and certainly very well presented. Um, <clears throat> I like the term uh, our budget team, and my guess is we probably have one of the strongest budget teams in California, uh, and also a year-round process. You know, we are um, 
We know that we anticipate changes up and down, and at that time, we start working on how to spread the money that we are anticipating to have to work with. And uh, it looks like it's well balanced again. I, it certainly, uh, you know, it, our budgets always represent hundreds of hours of work year round. So um, <clears throat> anyway, it's, it's great that we're able to uh, present this openly and, and appreciate the, the um, information that's given to us, giving us a chance to, to understand. This, of course, was an overview tonight. So we'll all have uh, questions, and certainly there will be answers. So anyway, well done, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to compliment staff also on the presentation and uh, making budgets work in difficult times. Um, the June 6th at 9 a.m. is difficult for me, so I hope we continue to work towards something that works for all the council members on that. And the open budget platform is, yes, yeah, something we've been talking about for a while, and, and that's great that the whole community can go on the website and see exactly where every dollar is being spent. I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hewitt, how long have you been with the city? A little over eight years. I can remember when you got here, and I can remember how you are today, and I've got to tell you that your public presentations are just outstanding, and you've made tremendous progress in the way that you present the material. You're always very uh, knowledgeable uh, when the council members present you questions, and I just want to compliment you of eight years of outstanding progress. Thank you, Mayor. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Under consent calendar, consent calendar items 8A through 8W with the removal of item 8L for approval. Council Member Smith. Do any council members wish to abstain from any items? Seeing none, do any council members wish to remove an item from the agenda for separate consideration? T is in Tom. T is in time, Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve consent items A through W, uh, excepting L, which staff wanted uh, to remove from the agenda, and item T for a separate consideration. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. <laughs> the motion is approved with Vice Mayor Hansen and Council Member Weir absent. Councilmember Parlier on item 8, T is in Tom, please. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank Jack and Carol Craig for their donation to the city for the new uh, police dog or canine. Uh, they contributed $8,640. And uh, talking with the personnel at the PD today, there was really no connection with, you know, uh, the canine unit or anything with this uh, wonderful family here in the city. And they just, uh, I believe this is the second dog they, uh, or money they've donated for a dog. And uh, again, I just want to thank them for that. I uh, also move this item. Thank you, Mayor. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved with Vice Mayor Hansen and Council Member Weir absent. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Next item is hearings. Before I open the public hearing portion of our meeting, I would wish to state the presentation time policy. Each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It is 15 minutes for all speakers. Therefore, it is important that you identify yourself and make your statement quickly so that others may speak. We will hear statements from those opposed to the staff recommendation. Then we will hear from those who wish to speak in favor of the staff recommendation. If there is testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal period. You will notice a clock on the wall behind me which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone and identify yourself. At 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash indicating that your time is up and to quickly end your statement. You may pose questions during your statement, but they will not be answered until the public hearing is closed. 
If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please provide it to the city clerk and she will provide the copies to the city council. Again, please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Unless there is an approval by the majority of the city council, there is a strict 15 minute time limit for all those in favor or in opposition to staff's recommendation. So please be precise and do not repeat the remarks of previous speakers. Madam Clerk, please read the uh, first public hearing item. Budget and Finance Committee report regarding fiscal year 2016-17 Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnership, Housing Opportunities for Persons with HIV AIDS, and Emergency Solutions Grant, Annual Action Plan Submittal, and HOPWA Amendment to the Consolidated Plan 2020. A staff memorandum has been received transmitting public comments received during the 30-day review period. Mr. McIsaac, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Mayor and members of the council. If I have the clerk turn the screen on. <clears throat> and in keeping with the theme of tonight's meeting on budgets and uh, money, it's my pleasure to present to you uh, this evening our uh, proposal for the fiscal year 16-17 HUD action plan in which we have a cumulative total of just a shade over $5 million uh, that has been awarded to the city in four different um, funding categories, which is a little bit of an, an increase of a little over $100,000 from $4.88 million that was um, available to us last year. Uh, this is uh, an overview of the schedule of how the process has developed starting uh, from um, when we requested uh, applications in last October. In March, the Budget and Finance Committee reviewed the recommendations uh, leading up to uh, the public hearing this evening. Uh, first, going to start with the biggest piece of the pie, that is the Community Development Block Grant uh, grant. There is a total of about $3.2 million, uh, and of that, uh, there are some things that first are awarded. We have about 20% that is typically uh, retained for administration. Uh, we have two, what they call Section 108 loans, which is um, basically uh, loans that are advances uh, in previous years, the biggest portion of that being the $4.1 million that was used to construct the McMurtry Aquatic Center. So we continue to pay the principal and interest on those loans. So uh, subtracting those amounts, that uh, gives us about uh, not quite $2.3 million in HUD, HUD funds or CDBG funds for utilization. Uh, one category in that is public services. You, we can utilize up to 15% of our uh, CDBG award for public services, uh, we are proposing uh, $260,000, which is uh, below that 15%. Uh, one of them is for $100,000 for fair housing program services. Uh, HUD has recently issued a new rule to affirmatively further fair housing, which has required us to devote a um, larger amount of money to providing fair housing services. Uh, 85000 to the Bakersfield Senior Center. This is an ongoing contribution, annual contribution we give to them to continue their services to the community. Alliance Against Family Violence. The council may be aware that they uh, recently came to the city because of some unusual um, challenges, budgeting challenges that they were having and uh, asked for some additional assistance this current year and this coming year. And then uh, Mission Community Services, this is a new proposal that we are recommending for funding where they would provide uh, classes to the community to assist them in starting up small businesses that will be leveraged with uh, other funding that would actually double that amount. So uh, that total budget is uh, $260,000. From that, we have uh, a total of 10 uh, projects that we are proposing for funding. Five of them are uh, street projects uh, here, which total 1.76 million, which is the lion's share of these slightly uh, $2 million 
that we're proposing for uh, these projects. Uh, the other ones are uh, home access rehabilitation. This has been a well-received uh, project where we re, uh, give small grants to homeowners who wish to do uh, re rehab to their homes to accommodate um, people with uh, disabilities. And another one is in the Martin Luther King Park is a phase two of some lighting improvements to improve the safety in that park. And then uh, finally, there in the last three are uh, three projects that the Parks and Recreation uh, Department has proposed to provide shade structures at various parks in the community. So uh, can go through these a little bit more in more detail. Uh, the, the public services that we, again, were recommending, Mission Community Services, Senior Center, and the Alliance Against Family Violence, and shows where those are located in the central area of the city. And again, as I stated, the uh, biggest share of the community development block grant funding is for continuation of the curb gutter and sidewalk reconstruction projects. This is something that the city has been emphasizing over the last uh, number of years and has been, um, I think, been very well received and has helped to improve some um, poor street conditions in uh, some of the low and moderate income uh, areas of cities. And this is an example of some of the conditions that this uh, program helps to correct. And we have, again, a total of five areas that we are recommending funding for this year, uh, totaling overall about 1.76 million. Um, one is the Oleander area in Ward 2. Uh, three areas, El Toro, Union Brundage, and P Street in Ward 1. And also one area in the uh, Castro Street area in Ward 7. Also, as I mentioned, we have um, three proposals to uh, install playground shade structures. As uh, you can well imagine, in the summer months, uh, the playgrounds are, are get uh, pretty uh, toasty, so uh, these shade uh, structures help to make them uh, more usable year-round. This is an example of one of them in uh, Jefferson Park. And this year, we are proposing to fund those shade structures in uh, Beal, Wilson, and Stern Park. Uh, in wards two and seven, respectively, and also, as I mentioned, a uh, $75,000 to uh, continue um, lighting improvements in Martin Luther King Jr. Park in Ward 1. Uh, moving from CDBG into the Home Investment Partnership Program, uh, this year we have available resources of about $1.1 uh, we continue to move forward uh, just on the consent calendar, uh, approved a, a couple other um, rehabilitation programs or projects to improve some existing housing projects in the city. So uh, we have the funding for this current year, uh, totaling um, minus administration of just about exactly a million dollars, which we will reserve for allocation to future needed projects. And again, here's an example of the uh, 20th, uh, Park 20th Apartments, one of the uh, recently completed projects that home monies have been used to help develop. The next one is the Emergency Solutions Grant uh, Program, uh, totaling $287,000. Uh, these programs are used generally to provide uh, social services to uh, low-income populations that are in need of that. Uh, we basically subcontract this money to uh, various nonprofit organizations that be, provide these services throughout the community. Uh, in the shelter and outreach projects, Flood Ministries, uh, Basic Bakersfield Homeless Center, the Rescue Mission, and an Alliance Against Family Violence, uh, these are all being proposed for funding in the uh, basically same proportional amounts as last year, and in homeless prevention and rehousing, $93,000 to the homeless center. And again, the location of where those uh, various organizations are located within the community. 
And lastly is a, a program, a HUD program, it's called Housing Opportunity for Persons with AIDS or HOPWA. This is a funding that is specifically reserved for that population that is in need of uh, housing assistance. Uh, we are proposing to uh, subcontract with the Kern County Public Health Department to administer that uh, program on the city's behalf. And I believe that is a summary of our plan for this year and be happy to answer any questions. At this time, I'll open the public hearing on this item and ask if there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in opposition to the staff recommendation. Persons wishing to speak in opposition to the staff recommendations. Seeing none, I will now ask if there are persons present in the audience who wish to speak in favor of the staff recommendation. Persons wishing to speak in favor of the staff recommendation. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing on this item to return to council for comment and action. Council Member Smith. I'll make motion to accept the report and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents required to submit the annual action plan and HOPWA consolidated plan amendment to HUD. Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Doug, I just want to thank you for that uh, Castro project uh, when I was running for office that was really important to that community. Some of those gap areas in the, the sidewalk, uh, in the gutter area, and along uh, Wilson. So again, thank you so much. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Doug, and your staff. Um, we heard this uh, presentation a little while ago now in budget and finance, and I'm delighted that we have quite a bit of activity going on in Southeast Bakersfield. Um, two questions. Um, where are we at on the two Section 108 loans? Uh, how, much, how much more time do we have left on payments associated with the, those two projects? I think I will have to refer, defer to my uh, staff coordinator, Ryan Bland, if there Perhaps, or I don't know, maybe uh, or Mr. It, Smith? If, if, it's not an, if it's not a question you can answer right now, if you could okay. just let me know. Oh, we could provide that Great. information Thank to you, certainly. That, uh, well, actually, I, I guess now's the time to bring this up as well. Um, there was, we, could, we received a memo with, with a letter from Faith in Action um, uh, regarding a few items. I actually met with uh, a group of, uh, constituents Monday evening there were about 25 30 people that got together at um, at a church in uh, just outside of my district actually um, we talked about a few things I just wanted to go over some of the items they raised in their letter because they are the same items we talked about at that meeting um, first component was uh, uh, lighting on Virginia Avenue now I know that a lot of um, a lot of that area is actually not in the city. Uh, we had a conversation earlier today about uh, pursuing some annexations on that front. But I'm curious, can we, um, either between what is in our jurisdiction what is, and what is in the county, look at maybe uh, enhancing the lights and, and installing those uh, the LED lights that I know we're doing in some other parts of Bakersfield um, to light up that area? Um, I think there's a different bulb we're using in some places that illuminates more. Uh, Mayor Hall, Council Member Ma uh, Rivera, we are looking at doing a full conversion of street lights from high pressure sodium to LED. Uh, we're in the process of um, trying to figure out how to phase those best in. Um, for Virginia Street, we are not coordinating with the county for their pockets, but we can try to uh, reach out to them and see if they um, could work with us in those areas. I think that'd be nice. It, it'd be a shame to have half the street light, uh, lit and the other half not lit because, it's, because there's a line drawn halfway through it. So if we could look into that, that would be great. Um, uh, is there anything we can do related to shade or playground shade requests at a school? Is that something that falls under CDBG jurisdiction or eligible project requests? 
I would think that that is potentially available, assuming it is in a uh, low and moderate income area within the city limits. Uh, we'd have to obviously coordinate with the school district uh, to fund such a, a project, but I, I think that would be potentially eligible. Okay, if, if, um, if we could reach out to the school and potentially um, you know, incorporate that into next year's cycle and, and if, if possible have them submit an application, I think that'd be great. And then um, the first point on, uh, on their, in their letter was related to parks, a community center, and a library. Uh, Mr. Hewat and I had a conversation regarding this, but I, I figure now is as good a time as any. Um, I'd like to make a, uh, a referral to staff and ask that they, um, at, at the very least, connect with, uh, with me afterwards to talk about a few things. Um, one, revisiting uh, the council's policy regarding inhabited city annexations, and then uh, you know looking at uh, the larger pockets of um, county land within Southeast Bakersfield that I think make addressing some of the issues this, these folks have brought up actually a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'd uh, like to ask staff to uh, follow up with me on that so that we can uh, get together and formulate a plan to move forward. Thank you so much. Otherwise, I'm in full support of this. Council Member Maxwell. Thank you, Mayor Hall. Um, like the others, I uh, do appreciate the presentation. Uh, I think uh, we're, we're doing a lot of good out there. Uh, I do want to say thank you for the, uh, <clears throat> the gutters and the, um, the sidewalks in the Oleander area. Um, I would say the only other thing that that general group of uh, this city complains about is the fact that 20 years ago they were promised that their streets were going to get worked on and we still to this day have never worked on any of their streets and they're some of the worst streets in, in, in all of Bakersfield. So I think that's something that uh, we had better address fairly soon because I think that they're deteriorating to the point where they're gonna have to be ripped out and uh, redone. I also had a question because it, Ward 2 and I think Ward 1, Ward um, 3 all have relatively older portions of Bakersfield. And I get the question about lighting, street lighting all the time. Is it that the newer sections of Bakersfield have different um, street lights as far as how far apart they are and the kind of lighting that they had to be? Or is it pretty standard throughout the whole city? Uh, Council Member Maxwell, some of the older uh, parts of the city that were annexed from the county may not have had the same city standards that we use. So um, the city standards have also changed uh, as uh, time has gone on. So um, you're correct, the spacing of, of lighting is different in newer areas. Uh, we've uh, increased the density um, based on new standards. So anything that's developed new will obviously meet new current standards, but some of the older infrastructure out there, areas that we've annexed from the county may not have had as well as some of the older, from what you just said, also some of the older sections of Bakersfield might have been uh, under different uh, standards, not just county, county uh, annexations, but also parts of the city because they're so old. Correct. Okay. Um, could we start thinking about how we're going to increase the number of street lights in those areas, uh, Westchester area, Oleander area, I know for Councilmember Rivera, there's probably plenty of areas he can tell you about that, that uh, our, our, our spacing is so far apart, we're not giving our citizens the feel of security because the city just doesn't have enough lights out there to, uh, to light it up. So I think that's something that we should probably concentrate on. And I just kind of had one question. Uh, Mr. McIsaac, you said the Fair Housing uh, Program Services, $100,000. Could, could you give me a more of a definition of what that money's going towards? <coughs> Well, in fact, we anticipate bringing um, for the council here very shortly a proposed uh, contract with the Greater Bakersfield Legal uh, Assistance League to um, provide these services. HUD has, within the last year or two, uh, adopted more in, um, involved, more detailed requirements for cities to provide uh, these types of services. Uh, so we are 
reaching out to a separate contractor. In this case, we're proposing uh, greater, greater Bakersfield legal assistance that can provide uh, assistance to homeowners who have, uh, or not homeowners, but uh, residents who have issues <coughs> with fair housing. So, okay. So in other words, they've been, they've been experiencing unfair housing and... Uh... They've, if they've been things like discrimination in, in housing accommodations and uh, being uh, rent gouging, things of that sort. They okay, so it's a legal foundation basically that they can, uh, they can resource. Yeah. Okay, so great. our residents have a resource that can help them resolve these types of issues that they may be facing. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know because uh, I, I think that's probably a question I've had in the past and not been able to have an answer for. So thank you very much. Otherwise, I think it's a good presentation. I'm in support of the uh, motion. You have a motion by Councilmember Smith. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved with Vice Mayor Hansen and Councilmember Weir absent. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Council and Mayor statements. Councilmember Maxwell. Thank you, Mayor Hall. Um, I recently was at a, uh, a neighborhood watch, and uh, I'd like to commend the police department for the people that were there. Uh, I know that I've already spoken with both the chief and the assistant chief about uh, the people that were there and what a great job they did. But I think one of the things that astounded everybody that was there was the coverage, the number of officers that were covering what's called the Hill Division. Uh, runs from 99 Freeway all the way out to the mouth of the canyon. Uh, it's pretty much north of 178, and that's basically 24th Street, and then it becomes the Crosstown Freeway. Um, and you know what I'd like is to get the staff to, to give us an idea or at least a schedule of how many officers during, during the different shifts are covering the different geographic areas. Um, because from what they were saying there, I think there were either four or five officers covering that geographic area on any given night. And it just, uh, I think it was astounding to those people that that, that few off, that number of officers, which is relatively small, was covering such a large geographic area. So um, I think it would be helpful for all of us on the city council to know exactly how many police officers are scheduled uh, at any given point during the day in the different divisions that we have and how big those divisions are. So that would be my one referral. Thank you. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things. Uh, again, I wanted to thank the mayor for supporting the uh, employee appreciation breakfast yesterday. That was wonderful. And uh, again, and, and a shout out to the employees of Bakersfield. I always think that uh, we're very blessed in the community to have employees that, that love to serve the community and, and are there to do their best to make it a better community as we all try and do. Uh, appreciate the grant on the agenda for bike racks downtown. I, I think that adds a lot to downtown, not just uh, for bicycle parking, but also uh, it's a piece of artwork and, and to see those bicycle racks is a good thing. So that's it. Have a great week. Thank you. Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. I want to echo Bob's uh, statements too regarding uh, your support of the employee breakfast. That was fantastic, Mayor. Um, and I also like to thank uh, the council members, uh, executive staff, uh, department heads that were out there uh, serving their employees and recognizing uh, their service to this community. Um, solid West, Waste, who's out there from Solid Waste? Anybody? Um, wait, Kevin Barnes uh, was just excellent. I met him, I had a problem with an area, it's off of Coventry, it's a very large uh, fourplex area. Uh, they had couches and mattresses and pallets and it was just a mess out there. And he sent the Tom Birch retiree uh, group out there to clean up along with the, the solid waste trucks. They just did a fantastic job. Uh, I couldn't tell you how much debris they, they removed out there, but it, it was a lot. Um, also last week, I was contacted by a gentleman uh, in my area and he had a uh, code enforcement complaint. I uh, went over there and visited with him. Uh, he was 82 years old, um, has some health conditions, and uh, the bottom line is he has a fixed income, uh, not the ability to uh, take care of his front yard. So I reached out to Valley Bible Fellowship Church 
and uh, over Saturday uh, weekend, uh, their adopt-the-block crew uh, went out there, uh, cleaned up his property, solid waste again. Uh, Robert was fantastic with them, uh, showed up. Uh, we loaded several bins uh, full of trash, um, but that's not all. Uh, community relations, uh, both Cindy London and Allie uh, with the PD, community relations, uh, reached out to him and uh, put him in contact with some county services. So we should get some uh, services through the county also. And uh, also want to thank code enforcement on that too. When I talked to them about it, they were very amenable to, uh, you know, adjusting their, their schedule on reinspection and stuff. Uh, and also, it just so happened that his neighbor, who's uh, disabled, uh, had a notice of violation. And while the church group was there, they went to the neighbor's house and took care of his yard too. So it was really great. Uh, the last item is the uh, 4th of July fireworks at Riverwalk. As we know with our uh, current budget crisis and a couple of our main sponsors backed out uh, from last year. Um, and we were about halfway to our goal of approximately $50,000, but we were still substantially short. Uh, in the last couple of days, uh, two great sponsors have come forward. Today, PG&E has made a verbal commitment for $5,000. And yesterday, Southern California Gas, or SoCal Gas, uh, has also made a commitment for $5,000 to help support our community fireworks display. And last year, I believe it had over 14,000 people, and it was just a great event for the community. So I want to thank uh, all of our sponsors. Oh, i got to mention, too, that uh, um, Hat Ad 2 has also said that they're going to be definitely interested in, in being one of our sponsors, too. Um, so I just want to thank them for their community support. And uh, that's it, Mayor. Thank you so much. Council Member Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, the word annexation has come up again. Just sitting here reflecting how many times that uh, subject and that word has come up over the last over 20 years. Um, I'm certainly a very strong, I'm very strongly in favor of, of working toward eliminating the many uh, pockets that we have within our city. Um, so, uh, Alan, could we have an update? Um, just what would be involved, how possible it might be, uh, just to give us an idea what we're up against and, and uh, how possible, probable, improbable it it might be that would certainly be very interesting to to hear about so i would appreciate that uh yes good news about the fourth of july and, and mayor yes thank you again for um sponsoring the employee appreciation breakfast we most of us were out there of course the day could not have been more beautiful but it was uh, of course hotels um, but it was just a very nice morning, and, and we do, we are delighted to be able to, we certainly do appreciate our, uh, our employees, and it's just a nice time to show that appreciation, greet everybody, and, um, you know, just sit and visit, and everybody knows that that's what the morning is about, appreciating, appreciating our employees. So uh, certainly very nice, so thank you for that. So that, uh, that's it for tonight. Excellent presentations and good meeting. Thank you. I'd like to uh, express my appreciation to Vice Mayor Harold Hansen for filling in for me at the, at the last meeting. And uh, I'm told that he did an outstanding job. And so if I'm absent again, then we can call on him. Uh, on April the 23rd was our 15th anniversary of Great American Cleanup Day. And I, I was happy with the participation of a number of the city council members that were there that day. Council Member Sullivan, Parlier, Weir, Smith, Hanson, Maxwell, for coming out, for being a part of our individual presentations that we uh, gave to um, many of the participants that year after year come out and make that an outstanding event. Uh, it was nice that we had the uh, privilege of having the uh, American, Great American Cleanup Executive Director for the nation here that day. And um, 
I took her around to several of the spots, and, and uh, she went to me, went with me to the Rayleigh for Life event, and, and uh, it, it was just really good that we had that 15th anniversary, and, and everyone did such a marvelous job and contributed. So I want to thank everybody, Solid Waste Department, the Parks and Rec Department, everybody that makes up the uh, committee uh, for the Great American Cleanup. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, but uh, we do such a marvelous job with that event because we have such continuity from so many of these committee members that have served for 15 years, and we know from year to year what to do. So that was a good event on that day, and, and I thank everybody for their assistance. Um, you know, and I, I really feel... Uh, I really feel honored that um, I was able to contribute those three ADs tonight to the city because it can make a difference. And one of the things that the city is extremely interested in is if it becomes necessary to save an employee's life, we're able to do that. And with the AEDs and the uh, fire department and the other uh, providers of emergency medical services here in the city, uh, we've got a good system. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear the continuation of, of more further education uh, for the various staff members because that's, that's what it all takes. And, and we, we need to encourage people to get involved. If they are confronted with an emergency, a medical emergency, they need to take action immediately. Call 911 and, and take immediate action to restore uh, bleeding or... or uh, make sure that we can have a survivor from an incident of that natural event. So if there's no further um, council comments, we stand adjourned.